is the first snow of the year. Um, it's the first one that's sort of sticking, anyway. Welcome to Friday, December 9th, 2016. Here's my weekly check-in. Good morning. Today is my week nine weigh-in. So this is my eighth, you know, weigh-in after starting Weight Watchers. And I'm down 17.1 pounds. Yes, I'm so excited. I lost 2.9 pounds this week, um, which has been great for my morale because as you guys know last week, I was struggling a little bit with these little tiny losses. So I'm happy to kind of have made up for it a little bit. I kind of attribute it perhaps to the fact that I haven't had any diet soda all week. Um, well, actually for the last five or six days, I actually have been just drinking water made a deal with myself that if I drank a certain amount of water, as you probably know from my earlier um, vlogs, that I would be able to have some soda after I drank that water. And I have been drinking the water and have not um, finished in time to want to have any soda. So I have it. And while I miss it a little bit, and I'm not telling myself I can't have it, it has been quite a good... Um, it's just been a good thing for me to do. I can't think of the word I wanted to use, but I'm gonna keep it up. Uh, I'm hoping it will clear up my skin a little bit. It will help me combat the dryness of the winter air. Uh, temperature today is like 23 degrees with wind chill of like 15 or something stupid like that. And my skin hates it. Uh, as much as I do. So, anyway, I'm really happy with my progress. I'm still running about two pounds, maybe a little over two pounds a week average. And that is right where I want to be. I don't want to be a fast loser. I really don't want to be a slow loser. I kind of like the two pound a week pace. Kind of gives me an idea of where to look forward. Um, but yeah, so... I'm gonna add another star to my weekly weigh-in picture and because that took me over the 15 pound mark finally and my goal was originally to be at like 20 pounds by before Christmas I think right now I'm kind of revising that to be 20 pounds by New Year's Day so New Year's Eve I guess December 31st because that way I will start the new year um, with a new mini goal and work toward that and um, just keep taking this one day at a time, one bite at a time, one SP at a time. So a couple weeks ago, I said that I was going to share a little bit more about my weight loss journey. And so I'd like to do that today. I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but needless to say, I was probably at my heaviest tracked weight. At age five, I was diagnosed with hyperactivity, which we commonly call ADHD uh, these days. And my parents put me on Ritalin to work with that hyperactivity. And then my stepfather came along and didn't want me on Ritalin. So they took me off Ritalin and decided to control my hyperactivity with diet. So the fact that I was a thin child and um, didn't need any kind of dietary restrictions didn't matter. It was about this ADHD. But in my head, I was just being told I couldn't eat things that my friends were eating. I couldn't have a Twinkie. I couldn't have red dye number five. I couldn't do the things all the other kids my age were doing, which made me turn into someone who would sneak food. 
so this continued food and I just never had a great relationship from that time forward just because it was always kind of a forbidden thing to me. Um, I was never taught just to eat healthy. Um, I didn't have a parent that cooked, really. Um, so everything was pretty much microwave and, you know, quick foods. And this was in the 70s, early 80s. So I just never had a healthy relationship with food. I didn't like things that tasted healthy. I didn't like vegetables. I didn't like you know, fish. I didn't, I, I was a very picky eater. I'm still a picky eater, but I've kind of expanded that as I've gotten older. So anyway, this bad relationship with food went on and on and on. And then I got pregnant and I had two children and I never lost that baby weight. I was never one of those people that had a baby and then like got back down to what they were before. I just kept it and then I got pregnant again. Same thing. Um, one day I woke up and I was like, I am fat and I'm unhappy and I have no energy and what am I doing you know my kids were getting older um, they were in their teen years and I started just kind of going on the internet and looking at weight loss surgery and I thought well I think I'll have gastric bypass so I started reading about it and I started reading about the things that can happen if you have gastric bypass and the nutrition deficits that could happen. And at the time, the lap band was a huge thing. I mean, it was just really gaining traction. A lot of people were choosing that over gastric bypass. So I started reading up on it and decided that that was the route I wanted to go. And I went to our local hospital and I went to a seminar. Uh, and I met the doctor and I just fell in love with him. He was amazing. And I talked to my family and we decided that I was going to go that route because I was sure that I could do the lap band, that I could work the program, and that it would work for me. So I did in December of 2007, I had lap band surgery. And um, in the following probably a year. I worked that band really well, had a great relationship with my doctor, a great relationship with a lot of the people that went through that program, um, both gastric bypass and lap band, and even I think some sleeves um, were people that I hung out with. We went to support group, kind of worked it like Alcoholics Anonymous. I mean, I would go to support group every month and we would hang out together and we'd support each other and I had my own little support group that I did also once a month um, and I was really successful I was a probably at the at my best I was about to hit a hundred pounds loss I think I was like within seven or eight pounds of it but I was having trouble with my band like at one point it was so tight that um, I was in constant pain, like so much pain that I thought I was going to have to go have this band removed, I was going to have to have another surgery. Um, and you know, uh, just a small tweaking of the band, the fluid that gets inserted into it to tighten it or loosen it, um, could, could cause that kind of discomfort. So, um, thankfully after that scare, I, you know, we found out that everything looked good. Everything was fine. My doctor took some fluid out. I was able to eat again and, um, I got back on track and I was still kind of just plodding along, um, heading toward my hundred pound. I remember thinking, what am I going to do to celebrate when I hit a hundred pounds? Well, I never found out because I never hit it. Soon after that incident, my doctor announced he was leaving to move out of state to work at another program and they replaced him and most of his staff at this hospital and raised the prices about 800 uh, percent for things like lap band fills and so forth and became more of a focus i felt that they were working toward a monetary thing rather than getting their patients healthy um, so i stopped going i had most of the fluid taken out of my band at that point and this was probably my dates might be wrong 2010 yeah probably around 2000 2009 2010 
Um, so at that point, I just kind of let it go. And I didn't go back to that doctor. I, I did not feel comfortable with him or his staff. I decided I would just keep going the course. Um, I knew enough that I didn't need the band to be doing its job and I could handle it. When I started my current job, it was early 2013. And I had probably gained back about 15 pounds by that point. As I was still trying pretty hard, but I got this job and I was really happy with it. And I think I just stopped focusing uh, on myself and on my health. I stopped wanting to journal. Oh, you know, it's a challenge, challenge. You guys know this. If you are, if you are journaling, you know that it's a challenge to do it every day, to write down everything you eat and keep track of it. But it is the one thing that tends to keep me on point. So I got happy and I gained probably 50 pounds in the last three and a half years. So obviously I stopped working the band, the band stopped working me. I was still down about 25 pounds, I think, from my highest uh, when I decided to do Weight Watchers again. So I didn't gain it all back, but I was on my way. I mean, totally on my way. So I still have the lap band inside of me. It doesn't have very much fluid in there. It does not really affect me all the time, though there are times when I will be eating and I will know that the lap band is playing a role in whatever I'm doing. And it depends on what kind of foods I'm eating. But it's very hit or miss. Um, and it's just something I kind of live with inside of me. Uh, I think about someday getting it removed and I'm not really sure how that's going to play out, but that's where I'm at. So you can have a successful weight loss surgery. You can successfully work the program. You can successfully lose the weight and you can very easily gain it all back just like anything else. So this time on Weight Watchers, my goal is to reframe this, reprogram this and get this to working properly before I die someday in my life. I want to just feel good, feel happy and um, satisfied with the weight that I'm at. So anyway, that's my little weight loss surgery story. Uh, I'll talk about some of the effects of gaining a lot of weight and losing a lot of weight and what it does to your body, to your skin. Um, and stuff in a later um, vlog, but I did want to share that story so you kind of know my background and um, what I'm dealing with because, you know, we all have our stories, we all have our histories, and we didn't all just wake up one day and go, oh, okay, I'm fat and I want to do something about it. We all have, like, stories and paths that have gotten us through this journey to the point where, you know, we decide to take it down a different path, and this is mine. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you were, um, you learned a little something about me. If you have any questions about it, feel free to, you know, leave them for me on Facebook, leave them in the comments below. And that's it for today. I will see you guys again on my next vlog. Have a great one. Mm -hmm.